Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and I'm here to show you the features that are new to the latest build of Spriter. For this example, we have this uh, platformer game boss character, and what we want to do is give him a pair of uh, John Lennon style sunglasses. So I'm actually just going to use a, um, a water bubble effect that I or image that I had already created just for this example. There it is. And just drag it onto the screen. Put that over there. So the first thing that's new to Spriter is cloning. So to clone, all you have to do is hold control and click and drag on an object and it'll create a new clone of that object directly on the canvas. And for the sake of perspective, I'm going to scale that and put it in place and maybe rotate it a little. And of course I could have set the pivot point to something like the center, but uh, for the sake of this demonstration it's not really necessary. So there we go. So now he has his, uh, his sunglasses, but of course the problem is they aren't on any of the other frames. So what do we do about this? Obviously it would be horribly tedious and very inaccurate to have to put them in by hand to every frame, so what can you do? Well, the first thing we want to do, if uh, if you're using bones, which I hope you are for a sort of humanoid character, um, you would know, we're going to pick this bone here for the head. If I hold B, we can see that this head image is assigned to the, to the bone, but of course these uh, sunglass lens images are not. So what we need to do is select that bone, hold B, and then select both of the sunglasses and now you'll see if I move the head bone the sunglasses move with the head that's what we want so now that that's properly assigned to that bone all we need to do is uh, select one of them hold control select the other just to do a multi-select I could have also done so in the list here and now that I have those selected I can control C to copy or choose edit copy and then I keep, there's a new feature, which is edit, paste to all keys. So not only did it paste both of these objects to all keyframes, but I'm going to show you by going to the next keyframes, you'll see that it pasted the uh, lenses in perfect, um, uh, shall we say, synchronicity, or, or they're perfectly aligned with the bone. So if the bone for the head is moved, then the lens is moved or rotated or scaled with it. So now the entire animation very quickly has his sunglasses where they need to be. Now that those lenses and their reference to the uh, parent bone of the head are in our clipboard, we can assign, we can uh, very quickly paste those lenses into all other animations. So for example, here's a laugh animation. And even though the, the head and the bone uh, head bone are in different places. We can choose edit, paste all keys, and there they are. So now this animation also has the uh, sunglasses perfectly in line to everything. So that's basic uh, cloning and copy and paste of individual objects or a couple of objects at a time. But what if we want to do something more sophisticated? What if we actually want to give this guy a whole other limb? Well, one great new feature is we can actually, any bone we select, if we press the Z key, it'll instantly select everything associated or every child of that object. And now that we've done that, if we hold control and click and drag, we'll see we've created a clone of the entire arm. So I'm just going to move that out there for now. Then I'm going to click this sh uh, shoulder bone and move this arm in a bit to give this new arm more room. And you'll see, not only did it clone a new arm, but it kept the, uh, the Z order exactly the same of each uh, part relative to each other. Um, and added that in C order over everything else. Um, so as you can see, that works great. And even better, if you look, when I made the clone, it remembers 
which, uh, th which objects or bones should be apparent to that newly cloned thing. So if I move the whole boss monster here, you'll see that the object is already properly parented, uh, just as the original arm that I cloned was. So now all that's left to do is copy this arm over to all of the remaining keyframes. So the way to do that, select the arm bone, press Z to select the entire arm, control C, and then control shift V to paste to all frames. And then there you go, you'll see the arm is properly uh, a child of the torso bone in proper uh, Z order alignment with its other relative parts and ready to be uh, animated with the rest of the character. And let me just uh, better explain and clarify the uh, cool sort of under the hood logic that Spryder uses for uh, in regard to copy and paste of objects within a frame. Let's say for example for some reason let's delete the head and head bone uh, on this particular frame of the character. Okay. So now we're completely missing that head and head bone. If I select the head bone, press C to select uh, the head sprite as well. Control C, go to the keyframe where it's missing, and Control V. Because it was missing, it created or it recreated the head and head bone. And as you can see, it even remembered that not only was the head bone supposed to be associated with the or a child of the torso bone, but also the head sprite is a child of the head bone. All right, so that's copying and pasting of something that's missing in the frame you're pasting into. If it's not there, it will just add it, and it will remember and uh, sort of re-child it to whatever it's supposed to be a child of. But there's another use for copying and pasting of, of an object, and that's if it already exists in a frame. Let's say, for example, we're animating this, and somehow we, uh, we change the, uh, the rotation of the head, for example, or the placement of the head. And then we realize that was a mistake later on, and we want to sort of return that sort of back to a normal position. We can actually go to any of the other, any of the other frames that have the head, for example, this frame, and select the head bone and control C. Since I didn't move the sprite relative to the bone, I only need to copy the data from the bone. So we're going to go back to the one that I messed up and control B to paste. Because it was already still on the canvas, it was still in the frame, instead of pasting a clone of the bone, which would have been useless, it knows that we just want to uh, paste in the data for that object and not, the, not a clone of the whole object. Remember, if you want to clone, I'm going to press C again to select the sprite and the bone. You just hold Control and click and drag. That's how you make a clone in a, in a frame. Okay, so now that we know how to add one thing or many things to all frames, what about the reverse? What if you change your mind and you want to remove something from all frames or many things? Well, you can do the same thing. You can either uh, select one thing at a time and delete them. Obviously, you don't want to have to manually delete it from all frames. So now there is, if you hold shift and delete, in this case we're just doing uh, the one shoulder armor sprite. So you'll see now that shoulder sprite is removed from the entire animation. But obviously it would be nice to be able to do that to multiple objects at a time, which we can do. So let's click on that arm bone again, press C to select the entire arm, hold shift, and press the delete key, and now we're de deleting the entire arm bone, uh, the entire arm from the entire animation. And there you go. So now I play the animation, you'll see he's back to having just his normal set of two arms. Uh, and while I'm speaking about deleting, uh, I should really point out how, uh, how cool this is. Even though this character is fully boned, and even though there's a hierarchy and things, positional data is dependent on the bones. In other words, it inherits the scale and position and rotation data from the bones. 
uh, under the hood Spriter is so intelligent that when you delete a bone, even if it's a critical bone to a limb that has children and uh, child sprites assigned to it, Spriter will actually make the uh, calculations necessary to keep the relevant things where they had been in, the, uh, in all of the keyframes. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to actually go to a sort of one of the keyframes in the middle of the animation and choose the actual major arm bone for this arm and press delete. Now, as you might know if you're used to any other animation program, be it 2D or 3D that uses bones, there should be chaos right now. These arm, uh, the rest of these arm images should be all over the screen because they no longer have the proper uh, parent data uh, telling it where it should have been relative to the bone since the bone is gone. But what Spriter did was actually recalculate the data for the position of the children and the, um, the, uh, the children, bones, and sprites to no longer uh, need the positional data of the bones. Okay, so what about copying and pasting not of objects but entire frames? Well, you can do that too via the timeline. And there are two ways you can copy a keyframe. Some keyframes, if you scroll up here, You'll see there are some keyframes that only have uh, data to change the position or alpha or rotation of only a few objects at a time, while there are other types of keyframes where I've manipulated every last object. Okay, So what you can do is you can decide what kind of a frame copy you want to make. Do you want to copy exactly what's currently there, meaning it'll only copy the data of those specific objects or do you want to copy as though even if you're in the middle of between you can copy as though this is a keyframe with everything uh, everything's data exactly as it appears on your canvas so to explain better what I mean let's say we want to start a brand new animation but we know we don't want to start from scratch reassembling the entire character and perhaps we know that the uh, that there's already a part of another animation like here's an animation of the character getting sort of hit in the stomach and reacting to it um, so let's say we know that the new animation we make has a position very similar or a starting position very very similar to this okay we can actually go to this frame or even better go to a part of the animation that is not a keyframe and we could do control shift C and what control shift C does is it tells Spriter even though this is not a keyframe and even though there's no actual data at this part of the timeline for those objects it's just being tweened it's going to compute all the data for those objects to be exactly where they are in that part of the animation so now I can create a new animation here we go, new animation, and obviously currently it's blank. And now, in my new animation, I'm just going to control V. And there you have the, um, the exact frame that was taken from the middle of an animation to start your new animation. And then, so I can just drag on the timeline, and let's say I wanted the character to really sort of get blown backward or something or fall over there you go so that's a really quick and easy way to uh, to start a new animation based on a position you can take from anywhere in a previous animation and uh, another thing that's really useful about uh, this uh, ability to copy and paste entire frames a lot of times in an animation to emphasize impact or uh, or something like that or, or an extreme of motion you want to do sort of a vibration effect so let's take uh, this frame here then I'm going to again I'm going to uh, choose that keyframe control shift C to copy everything and then slide over a little bit in the timeline control V to paste that keyframe so now I have two identical key, uh, keyframes and I'm going to just move the whole character a tiny bit so now if you look I'm panning back and forth between these two keyframes it moves a little bit um, I'm going to go back to this one control shift C and then 
control V. And because it already has all, uh, all things are already keyed, all objects, I can just use control C and control V. Control C, control V. And I can even do two at a time by holding control, control C, control V. So now if I play this animation, you'll see, I don't know if the frame rate is good enough because I'm screen recording, but I'll spread these out more. There we go. So now the vibration should be easier to see. There you go. One last uh, nice addition to the latest build of Spryder that I should mention before ending this video. It has nothing to do with copy, paste, or delete, but can still be very useful. Um, this has to do with when you're scaling a sprite or a bone. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the sprite as the example. Usually in Spryder, uh, when you're scaling a sprite, it scales relative to the pivot point, which you can see here is sort of in the center of the knee armor. So when you scale, it scales relative to that, which under most circumstances and most animations is going to be how you want your scaling to work. But sometimes when you're animating uh, things, you might want the sprite to scale relative to an edge. So if you hold the Alt key while you're scaling, you'll see it no longer scales relative to the pivot point, it scales relative to the edge opposite of the edge you're, you're manipulating. There you go. That's with the Alt key held, and this is without the Alt key held. Thanks for watching.